Hello guys, so this is Mr. Koi. I'm not going to go over these too much because we did spend most of a day talking about them and working on them. For people who are absent, I will do a little bit, but you can come see me on Thursday at 7 in the morning. I will be there at the classroom if you need help. So, it's an airplane flying along at high speed. At some point, it drops a ball out of the door. So, you need to think something about the ball at the beginning or at the start. Has some velocity going this direction. And later, as it falls, it's going to speed up, but still have this velocity in this direction. And even later, it'll have even more velocity going in this direction. So hopefully you know which one of those that looks like. Which of Newton's laws will explain it. Make sure you know Newton's laws. And that's all I'm really going to say about that one. Um, B, if all the people in the world can all go on one side, say they're all over here, and they jump up and down at the same time, could they knock the Earth out of the orbit? It's hypothetical because there's no way we could coordinate 8 billion people. But what do you think? What forces would be involved? Such as, most obviously, the force of gravity. And use one or more of Newton's laws to explain your answer. So it's really, it's kind of a yes or no, but you definitely have to explain it. And that's what I'm mostly going to be grading, is how will you explain it and how well do you say Newton's law that does explain it. Alright, so if you look at all the, um, at your huge packet, there is a vocab list. You should be able to explain or understand what all of those are. This is kind of just a sampling because there is a lot of vocabulary in physics. So in class again, we talked about what is equilibrium. So equilibrium is, it's basically not that things aren't moving, but it's more like a no change in status. Like, the Earth is in equilibrium. For example, sure, there's more people on the Earth, more and more, but there's not more matter on the Earth. The amount of matter that's been on the Earth has been on this Earth since the beginning of time, as we know it. And the only time mass goes off the Earth is when it, say, we put it up into orbit, like satellites. Or maybe if a straight asteroid comes. But in general, the matter on this Earth doesn't change. It's in equilibrium. But it is changing forms at all times. But there's no change in its total. Or its current status. Sigma, this is a sign for sigma. If you don't know what this is doing in front of the F, I would Google it. That's what I'm going to tell you with some of these answers. Because hopefully by being alive in class, you do know them. Sigma is the sum, if you're not sure what that means. Again, definitely come and see me, preferably as much as possible. Alright, what about some examples of vectors? Vectors are have a magnitude and a direction. That's what makes them vectors, is that they have a magnitude and a direction. Some examples of this, really one I like to use is velocity. It has a direction. Forwards, backwards, up, down, left, right, it has a direction. Scalar would be a speed, is a scalar, and it has no direction. It's just a magnitude, it just has a number, like you could say 3 meters per second, that's a speed. 3 meters per second to the right at 25 degrees, that's a velocity. Alright, what are some coefficients we use, what do they mean? We've used mu static and mu kinetic, these are the coefficients of friction. Again, if you're watching this video, you probably have access to the internet. I would look those up or use your textbook to look them up. What's the difference between mass and weight? We've gone over this, but mass is the amount of matter. Weight is the force. Friction force, the equation F of F equals mu times the normal force. It's, you know, the force of things, what physically causes it. It's whether things are physically rubbing up against each other or not. What about spring force? 
so it's friction. There's some there's a static one and there's friction while it's moving. Spring force, that would be F spring is equal to negative K delta X. Um, what is the spring constant? It's this K. It's basically how hard the spring is to move. Newton's first law, I'm not going to write them, but Newton's first law is an object in motion will stay in motion, object rest will stay at rest, unless acted upon by an outside net force. Newton's second law is F equals MA, so the amount of force is proportional to the mass and the acceleration of the object. And Newton's third law is there is always an equal and opposite reaction for every action. So you can also think about there's always an equal and opposite force to every action. So this would be talking about your force pairs. You push on the your, you pull on the earth, the earth pulls on you. You sit in your chair, the chair pushes up at you, you push down on your chair. Um, what's a component? What's a resultant? Components are parts of things that add up to a whole. So for example, going a little bit down and going a little bit right gets you a larger vector to the down and right. So this would be components and this would be the resultant. Alright, so this is draw the free body diagrams and label the force pairs. So for the first one, there's a skydiver descending at a constant velocity, so we know there's gravity to skydiver, but he's not accelerating, which means there has to be an equal and opposite force. So we know it is, but what should we label it? You can le either label it air resistance or, you know, f the friction of the air, but that is what it is. It's the air pushing back at up at him. So, really quick, it would be, for the, for the force of the air, it would be the air pushes on the skydiver. The skydiver pushes on the air. For gravity, it'd be the earth is what causes gravity. So the gravity pulls on the skydiver. The skydiver pulls on earth. That would be the first one. The second one in case you haven't tried it, try it, pause it, and we'll let you know the first second one is exactly like the first one, exactly, except instead of skydiver, replace this with the word squirrel, abbreviated here by SQ. There, now it's the squirrel problem. He might be moving to the side, but the only forces on him are up and down, so he'll keep that constant velocity he already had. So for the third one, you're pushing a book against a flat wall, so here's your vertical surface, there's a book on it, you're pushing it this way, so what forces are on it? So this is your book, you are pushing it this direction, so this is the F of your push, or the force applied. It's still on Earth, so there is the force of gravity. We know it's not falling down, so we don't have a name for it yet, but there is some force going up. We'll think about that in a second. And what's p stopping us from pushing it through the wall? Well, the wall itself. And it's a force from a surface, which and perpendicular to that surface, so that tells us, hey, that is the normal force. <coughs> so, from here... Well, what's keeping it up? Think, would it be harder on a slippery surface to hold it up, or would it be harder on, say, if you're holding it against a sandpaper wall or stucco? Hopefully you can think, well, if it's slippery, it's a lot harder to hold up. Well, so the contact and the surface type matters. That can let you know, oh, that's got to be friction. So those are all the forces. I'm not going to label all them, but... I, you will need to. So, gravity, again, it's earth pulls book. Book pulls earth. And then friction, you can just say 
it's from the, the friction is from the wall. Wall rubs book, book rubs wall. Yes, that is terrible handwriting. Listen to the video instead. Alright, so that's it for those. Another one is an adding vectors problem. So let's say we have a ball. Let's start here. We start by going two up, three to the left, one to the right, five down, and four to the left. So that is be what your path should represent. So your direct path is going to look something like this. Down below it says label all the vectors and the components. So what I'm really saying is have name your vectors and give me the x and the y parts of it. So this one, oh, the first one is up 2. So the x component, well, 0, it's only going up. This would be 2 newtons. The left would be left 3. So that's 3 to the left. And since it's left, that tells us it's negative, And there's 0 going on in the y direction. And so on and so forth. And I'm going to do this really quick now. Write 2. Oops, write 1. Down. All right, so if you add them, that will get you negative 3 and negative 6. Which, if you count, oh, hey, look, you went down 3 here, and you went to the left 6. The next part, if you flip your page, if that's for magnitude and angle, that would be finding one of these angles, I just picked that one, and figuring out what this C is. So I'm erasing this. Listen to the tone for entertainment. Um, so you want to figure out your C is, so that would be from A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it would be 3 squared plus squared equals C squared. If you do all this math, it will get to 45, 36, 9 equals C squared. Square root it, and you'll get something like 6.7 equals C. And then you want, so that's not our C. We now want to find theta, or the angle. Because remember, you need an angle. I'm going to let you know, you definitely want to use tangent, and it's opposite over adjacent. So it would be negative 3 over negative 6. Don't worry too much about your negatives, although in this case they definitely cancel out. Do tangent inverse, put your 3 over 6 in there. We'll get you theta, and you'll get about 26.6, which I'm going to round to 27 degrees. So your full answer would be 6.7 newtons. These are newtons, remember. At theta equals 27 degrees. And make sure you have this triangle so you let me know which angle you found. Alright, I'm about to stop this video and do all of this in the second video. Really quick, we already did this. I just did it on the page. Um, and then Hooke's Law is just the spring. So you have to explain its meaning. So explain what part. So this is your force. Spring constant. Displacement. So what do I mean by those things? So displacement is how much the spring compresses or extends. Spring, oops.
or stretches. This one is how tough the spring is. Alright, ending this video and I will do the last two in a different video.